Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Life on Board, Amy Joe. And what a lovely morning it is today. Yeah, yeah, not bad at all, is it? It's uh, going to be another warm one, but uh, must remember to bring Smudge out when we do this, because <laughs> all you hear is him whining in the background. I do apologise. He's fine. He just doesn't want to be left behind. Uh, yeah, little cruise today. We're going to have a two-hour cruise up to Kinver. Uh, today and we're going to stop there. We're actually well ahead of schedule. We don't need to be back to Hurlston till the end of the month. So we're we're uh, slowing Making down the most a little bit. Of it, aren't we? Yeah. Just exploring the surroundings. So, yeah. So if you're all sitting comfortably, we'll get going. Yeah. Enjoy. So here's an update to our position in regards to the rest of the country. The red square in the middle of your screen there shows where we are. So from Morverley Lock we continue our journey along the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal to Debdale Lock and from Debdale Lock we then carry on through Alscliffe and Council. We cross over the Staffordshire Worcester County boundary through Whittington Lock and finish off at Kimber. Here's a little factoid for you about the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal. It's a navigable narrow canal, that means only narrow boats, not wide beams, can use the canal. And it passes through Staffordshire and Worcestershire in the English Midlands. The canal's 46 miles or 74 kilometres long, linking the River Severn at Stourport in Worcestershire with the Trent and Mersey Canal at Great Haywood Junction. James Brindley was the chief engineer of the canal. And it was completed in 19, uh, sorry, 1771 for a cost that exceeded its authorised capital. But it did open for trade in 1772 and it was a commercial success from day one. With trade from the Staffordshire Potteries southwards to Gloucester and Bristol and trade from the Black Country northwards to the Potteries via the junction with the Birmingham Canal at Addersley. canal is what's known as a contour canal. That is that it follows the same level of land throughout its course. In fact there are only 43 locks in the whole length of the uh, Staffordshire and Worcester canal. The result is <laughs> very tight blind bends like this one coming up. And as Chris says, we're on a limestone wall. The canal was probably dug around a limestone um, layer, and some of it was cut out to make the canal plateau.
the Debdale Wharf, we caught up with new friends Nigel and Jackie on Adagio. We just spent the evening with them having uh, a few drinks in the pub uh, back at Wolverley, and they had left just slightly before us. Now our normal practice is for me to jump off the boat with the centre line and more up, but on this occasion Chris jumped off with the centre line, and because the boat was still more moving very slowly, she wrapped the centre line round one of the mooring bollards and just let Amy Jo's own momentum, momentum pull her in towards the bank as she moved forward. However, Nigel, being the gentleman that he is, thought Chris was struggling and ran back towards Amy Jo to help her with the centre line. Those of you that have followed our vlogs for some time will remember that when we were cruising into Chester we had a gentleman help us called Ian. We're here at Debdale Lock. There was a gentleman very much like Ian. He was here helping boaters through the locks but his sense of humour and wit was absolutely excellent and he kept Chris entertained all the while the lock was filling. So this cave was hewn out of the, uh, the sandstone right alongside Debdale Lock. It's unusual because it's the only one around and nobody really knows the reason for it. But according to law, it was used to rest the horses in. And if you look around the lock, from there to there, there is absolutely no way you could get a horse on this side of the lock landing. So what was its purpose? Uh, warning, I'm going to sound the horn in a minute. This is to alert any boats coming through the tunnel ahead. 
uh, that we were there and as you'll hear we actually got a response This is Cooksley Tunnel and of course we had to meet another boat coming the other way but there you go. Cooksley Tunnel is 65 yards long or 59 metres. It's hardly worth putting the tunnel light on but as you saw it paid off because we spotted the boat in the tunnel long before we came through. The tunnel is one-way traffic for obvious reasons as you see on the left. The towpath runs through the tunnel as well. This narrows the distance inside the tunnel to one boat width. moorings along this bit. Not quite sure where this bit is but looks really delightful. Chris will tell me in a minute. It's Cookley towards Oscar. It's Cookley. Well there must have been a railway line running through here at some time because somebody has placed a railway semaphore in the middle of the field. <laughs> Just so you know, Horse Cliff Holiday Home Park. Looks really nice. That's lovely. Absolutely beautiful. lazy lot sheltering in the shade. Very amusing.
this is Whittington Lock and because uh, we know there's a boat ahead of us it's against us so Chris is just setting the lock at the moment now this lock's quite interesting because like most locks it does have a double set of lower doors uh, gates but just look at this the, the inset that the gate sits in on this side is twice the length of the gate which makes me think that originally this lock only had one gate at the bottom and the gate inset on this side obviously is for the gate on the right hand side as we're looking at it but it might also have been set back to allow the single gate to swing round and seal fascinating lock this one because this is the by wash that runs through the lock but it runs under the lock keepers cottage well full credit to the guy that keeps this garden because trying to keep a lawn manicured like that by a river is really hard so he's doing a cracking job of that 